Um, so first things, you've prepped the area. You've made sure that you've uh, landmarked the proper anatomical area. Uh, next, you will now drape the area, um, dispose the, the area of puncture. We're going to choose the left lower quadrant just because of a period of convenience. There are some studies to show that the, this side of the abdominal wall is thinner. Yep. So we've landmarked the area before uh, anatomically. Now we've landmarked the ultrasound. So let's get our area prepped and ready. So if we can just lay out the tools we'll be using. We have a drainage bag there. Perfect. Okay, our drainage tubing. We've already cleaned the area, so we don't need the prep sticks. The drainage catheter, which is a safety centesis catheter. Okay, we'll drop some 1% lidocaine there. Usually, I, I would like for you to freeze the area first, and um, when you freeze the area, you can just go in far enough to uh, draw up some uh, peritoneal fluid to make sure you're happy with the trap. Yeah, so if you mark the spot here, use the ultrasound probe to find the area that you, you think is the easiest and safest to access. Then you can use the, the hub or the back of either a blunt fill cannula or another needle to make sure you've marked the spot for entry. This is more what's called a static ultrasound technique rather than an ultrasound guided technique per se. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll get the sheath on the linear probe too and make sure that we don't see any blood vessels over the skin. That way we can try to avoid them if we can. So usually I'll do this in advance of the procedure, and um, if you're able to, use both probes to locate the site, make sure there's no vessels, and then mark it. And then you're welcome to prep and drape after. That way it kind of reduces the need to necessarily, um, to necessarily put sheets over the probe during the procedure. Now we'll look at the abdominal wall. I'll change your setting here. There we go. Okay, and we're looking for basically um, circular uh, anechoic density between blood vessels. Okay, we can we can check here as well. Put some color Doppler over the abdominal wall. Just looking for any low uh, velocity signals, any color signals that will determine that maybe it's a vein. And uh, you can do that in both axes, both in short and long axis. So move the probe and rotate it just over your site. And that just helps identify whether or not there's vessels there. We don't see any vessels there, so we're, we're pretty happy that this is a safe site to enter. Okay. Great. Now we can get on with the procedure. We'll start by freezing the abdominal wall. And okay, it will sir. Okay. Little poke. We'll freeze the skin first, and then we'll go down to the perineum. <laughs> okay, now we'll go down to the perineum and make sure we have a safe track in order to aspirate peritoneal fluid. So good, I see that you're, you're aspirating and injecting as you go. That's a great technique to, to make sure you're not in a blood vessel. Okay. Yes, we'll switch to a longer needle. That way we can enter deeper into the abdominal wall to get to the peritoneum.
Okay, so now we're going to freeze the abdominal wall down to the perineum. Okay, as we go, we're going to try to get some peritoneal fluid back. That way we're happy with the track to get to the peritoneal fluid itself. There we go. There's some nice yellow fluid. That means that you're, you have a nice clean track to get to the peritoneal fluid. Okay, so now you have your safety through the catheter. So as you can just show here, you have the, you have the needle itself, the inner uh, stylet, and the outer catheter. So this is a, a catheter or a needle in catheter technique. This gets inserted on block. And basically as you go um, and advance it to the site with, uh, with a syringe on the back, then you'll aspirate, once you aspirate fluid, then you'll stop and you'll advance the catheter over the needle. Okay, a little nick in the skin and we'll advance the catheter. Okay, and like you're aspirating as you go, that's great. Okay, there's some nice perineal fluid there. Kind of good further to make sure the entire bevel is in the body itself, that's great. Now the catheter will slide over the needle gently into the peritoneal space. That's great, your hand was nice and fixed there in the back so the needle wasn't going along. Excellent, now the catheter is in the peritoneal space and allows for drainage uh, to collect the sample and to allow for drainage. Okay, now that stopcock has to, yep, come towards you to allow for aspiration. Excellent, now we can get, get a food for sample for diagnostic purposes. And once we have a good sample, you know, about, about uh, 30, 40 mils, then we can connect uh, up to a drainage bag and allow for uh, a more uh, therapeutic paracetesis. That's great, okay. Now we'll just uh, connect to the drainage bag. Now, if this drain was being left in place, it'd be sutured to the abdominal wall. But because we are just putting this in for um, uh, a one-time paracetesis, we don't need to necessarily suture it. But I would, I would say that it's, you have to be very cautious making sure the drain does not come out. Okay, now we'll connect the drainage bag to the Foley bag and allow for free-flowing drainage. We'll open the stopcock, and there we go. There's the fluid. So it'll be under some pressure at first, especially have, if you have significant ascites or tense ascites, but over time it will uh, go down. And depending on what your goals are, you can drain a liter, two liters, upwards of four to six liters for a more larger volume paracetamol. So that's the conclusion for the procedure. It's fairly straightforward. One thing is after the, you've, uh, you're satisfied with the drainage, you'd clamp the drainage, you'd remove the catheter, and then you'd place a uh, occlusive bandage over the site, and then I'd ask the patient to roll over on the contralateral side, just to prevent an ongoing leak of, of acidic fluid. Okay, that's the end of the procedure.